Jeremiah chapter 26. And we're halfway through. Halfway through of 52 chapters. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came the word from the Lord, saying, Now we're getting dates. We're getting the dates. We're getting the rulership of the king. <clears throat> and you can follow this along in 2 Kings and Chronicles. If you write out the kings in order, thus saith the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house, or the temple is, and speak unto all the cities of Judah, well, the street preachers, which come to worship in the Lord's house. So everyone that's coming to the Lord's house, preach to them. All the words that I command thee to speak unto them, diminish not a word. So everything I tell you, Jeremiah, you better say it all. That's what a man of God's called to do. That is someone who's called to go in all the world and preach the gospel. You ought to preach the word of God and not diminish it. Not put the world into it, but what God says. If conditioned, so be they will hearken. And turn every man from his evil way, repentance. So Jeremiah is a warning. All the people are coming to worship the Lord's house should be doing right. But not really. How many people go to church and are truly saved? How many people go to church because the pastor forces them? Shut the doors of our church house be open. Everyone should be here. And if you come because of that, that's not a contrite heart. That's not a, that's not giving willingness. That's by force. The only one that should be forced going to go going to church should be the children. And we find out that these people go to the Lord's house and they're not serving God. They don't get right. Matter of fact, we read that there are idols and there are other things at the Lord's house. They're in every street. It's a show. But there are probably some who, who do right. Because we just read in our reading today, 4,000 people went to uh, Babylon in the captivity. Well, 4,000 people, the Lord sought their eyes upon. There were a lot more Jews in Israel, in Judah, and Jerusalem than 4,000. So if they repent, that I may repent me of the evil, which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil they're doing. So Jeremiah is speaking to the sinners. Jesus come, said, I come to save that which is lost. I am not called a righteous. Jeremiah is preaching to those who have sinned, and when I tell you what your sins are, you'll repent of them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, If ye will not hearken to me, to walk in my law, that's not the church age, which I have set before you, that's all the law, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, and Jeremiah is not the only one, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early, and that means, you know, coming before all the destruction comes, and sending them, but ye have not hearkened. So these people that Jeremiah is preaching to have heard the message. And they've heard the message. And Jeremiah, they're going to hear the message. And who in Jeremiah ever gets right that's recorded? Not a one. Then will I make this house like Shiloh. Psalm 78, 60. 1 Samuel 4, 10 and 11. This is where the ark was taken by the Philistines. This is the first city that really was established at the tabernacle once they got in the land and it was forsaken. And the Philistines took the ark. And will make this city, Jude, uh, Jerusalem, a curse to all the nations of the earth. That's where God sets his eyes. You know what's standing there right now? The dumb of the rock. That's a curse. That's a religion. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words. 
I know there's no comma there, but look who heard, the priest and the prophet. Why? Because he's at the temple. The Levites are listening. Remember Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1? He's a Levite. What prophets? They're sure not the prophets of God. What have we been reading for 26 chapters? People heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die. Great message. Great outcome. Great altar call. You know somebody else like that in the Bible? Stephen. And they literally killed him. They stoned him to death, and they were, the Bible says they used him as chewing gum. They chewed the preacher out. Why hast thou prophesied in the name of the Lord? Because the Lord told me to. Saying, this house shall be like Shiloh. Now they knew the history. They knew the wilderness and the desolation. And the outcast in the story. And this city shall be desolate without inhabitant. And all the people were gathered together against Jeremiah. In the house of the Lord. So Jesus knocking on the door of the church, wanting someone coming out, and Jeremiah is knocking on the temple doors, wanting someone to come out, and what he got was a death sentence. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I, the recent men who got saved at prison, I make sure they know that verse. I make sure it's not a prosperity gospel. I make sure they know what the gospel is and they know what sins is. You may say, well, you know, all of a sudden you've got two people saved. You know, what do you, no, I'm not warning the gospel down. I just make sure these guys have just been broken. Jerusalem hasn't been broken. They're living high on the hog. Nebuchadnezzar's going to come. He's going to start, you know, cutting off the food. And even then they still don't get right. They're gone beyond repentance. When the princes of Judah heard these things, they, then they came up from the king's house unto the house of the Lord. Now you're going to get the princes. The princes, excuse me. You're going to have the priests, the princes, the prophets, all against God. So they come down from the king's house and sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he has prophesied against this city as he have heard with your ear. So this is a place of judgment. They sit down at the Lord's temple at the gate, and they hear the parties. They hear the defendants and they hear the plaintiffs. Then spake Jeremiah unto all the princes. Here's the defendant. And to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house, against this city, all the words that ye have heard. Therefore now amend your ways and your doings. Repent. That's repent. That is the definition of repent. And obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. As for me, behold, I am in your hand. Do with me as seemeth good, and meet unto you. That's what Paul said. But know ye of certain, that if you put me to death, you shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourself. They've been killing prophets all along, Jesus said. You bring innocent blood upon yourselves, murder. And upon this city... The ground cries out, Cain, where's your brother? Upon the inhabitants thereof, 
Why? Because all the people said he should die. What do you think America is heading right now when it comes to the men preaching the gospel? Especially maybe they preach against Sodom. What do you think they're going to hold you off to? They're going to hand you before the mattress of the land and they, Jeremiah is going to be spared, but you may not be spared. You see how America is following the footprints? How many men in the pulpit and on the streets preaching the word of God have been tried to stop, just like Jeremiah in chapter 26? As for me, behold, I am in your hand. Do with me as seems good, and me unto you. He didn't call for a lawyer. He didn't call for justice. He didn't call for the Constitution. He didn't wrap himself in the flag. He told the truth, but know ye for certain that if ye put me to death, ye shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourself. Listen, you kill me, you're going to be a murderer. And upon this city, and upon the inhabitants thereof, for of a truth the Lord has sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. Mark chapter 16, what do you do? I go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now, if you want to kill me for that, that's, that's, I'm in your hands. I'm going to let you know. If you do, you'll be charged with murder. You've only added another sin to your life. But God has told me to tell you that there's a hell and there's a way to escape. And that way is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work upon Calvary, and the empty tomb. Now, do what you want with me. But that is the gospel. That is with the word of the Lord. Then said the princes unto all the people, and unto the priests, and to the prophets, This man is not worthy of to die. Oh, these guys are... For he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Oh boy, look at that. You couldn't even get Congress to say that. You couldn't even get the Senate to say that in America. But the princes of the king of, of Judah say, Hey, you know what? He's speaking right. And to... Uh, to shut him up even more, then rose up certain of the elders in the land. Now you got the elders, you got the ancient people. Here comes here comes the old farts. With their walkers. And spank to all the assembly of the people, saying, Look, you got the priests and the prophets are against Jeremiah. The princes have come down, are sitting in the gate, and they pronounce that he's not worthy of death. He's spoken to God. And if he's a false prophet, the law states, Mr. Priest, that if his prophecy does not come to be, then he's a false prophet, then we'll stone him. But Jeremiah's prophecy does come to pass. So he's not worthy of death. And then the old farts come up and saying, My God, our Merserite, prophet in the days of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, and spake to all the people of Judah, saying, that's the same Micaiah, chapter 1, verse 1. And spake to all the people of Judah, saying, and this is quoted correctly. Except for like a field, I think, as, uh, that's the only thing. It's just a definition of the word. Zion shall be plowed like a field. And Jerusalem shall become heaps. How was it described in Nehemiah? What did Nehemiah say when he took him and his little donkey for a little ride? So Jeremiah becomes a proper prophet. And the mountain of the house, of the house, as the high places of a forest, overgrown with trees. And Listen, guys, Micaiah spoke to us. Jeremiah is speaking to us. Out of the mouth of two or three, <laughs> they just back. They walked up and said, "This is what Micaiah said." Now you know the people, the priests, and all of them are going to go for a downfall. Did Hezekiah, king of Judah, and all Judah put him at all to death? Did he not fear the Lord and besought the Lord, and the Lord repented him of the evil which he had pronounced against them? Thus might we procure great evil against our soul. You guys better do what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah had a great revival. 
I think he's the king that had that had the Passover in the wrong month, but the Lord said, listen, I'm going to pardon it because your heart's right, and that place where yours is so wicked, you got to have extra time to clean the place up, I believe, Hezekiah was. But Hezekiah, listen to Micaiah. These old men are saying, well, why didn't you listen to Jeremiah? He's saying the same thing as Micaiah said. And there, was an, there was also a man that prophesied in the name of the Lord, Uriah, the son of Shemaniah of Kirjah Jerem, who prophesied against this city and against the land according to all the words of Jeremiah. Oh, here's another prophet that backed up Jeremiah, out of two or three. The first one, they want to kill him. And it stopped. The second one, the people get right. The king gets right. And when Jehoiakim the king with all his mighty men and all the princes, there's the same people who just who's standing or sitting in front of Jeremiah right now said he's not worthy of death. Heard the, his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard it, he was afraid and fled and went into Egypt. Not a proper way to act. That's not how Jeremiah acted. Gentlemen, Jeremiah stood right in front of you and stood in the Lord. And Jehoiakim, the king, sent men into Egypt, namely El Nathan, the son of Achbor, certain men with him into Egypt. And they fetched forth Uriah out of Egypt and brought him into brought him unto Jehoiakim, the king, who slew him with a sword and cast his dead body into the grave of the common people. And this prophet's killed. What is the what are the three attitudes? One, you get right like Hezekiah. Two, you do as, as, as opposite like Jehoiakim. You just kill the prophet. And number three, you want to kill the prophet, but you don't do it. Two are wrong. Nevertheless, the hand of Ahiakim, the son of Shaphat, was with Jeremiah, that they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. And he spared. And he turns out to be a proper prophet because everything he says comes to pass. Now, where is it recorded? Anybody got, got right and turned to the Lord? The altar call, where is it? There is none. There's not one person that gets right. They stand up for, Je for Jeremiah, but they don't follow him. Why did the prince save Jeremiah? Well, they didn't want to be charged with murder. They didn't want to be guilty. They didn't want the king to be guilty. But they didn't do it for God. Else God would have recorded it that they'd done it for the Lord. And after they say, okay, he's not worthy to die, the elders start showing up and say, hey, listen, this is what the Bible says. Let's quote Micah chapter 3, verse 12. Open your scrolls, gentlemen. Micah 3, 12. Zion shall be plowed like a field, and Jerusalem shall be made heaps, and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. Okay, now let's... And if you check your Bibles, gentlemen... Hezekiah got right. You guys ain't getting right. No one's got right. You know what? You killed the, the next one. You killed the prophet. And there have been dead prophets, Jesus said. He stoned them, Jesus said. This nation, halfway through this book, has fallen. And they're not going to get back up. How far is America to killing prophets of the Lord? You know, it was in America's history that prophets, preachers of the gospel of the word were stoned, had their property confiscated by churches, congregational churches. 
Let's get the other one. Congregational churches up north and Anglican churches down south were persecuting the Bible believers. There were times in America you couldn't even have a Baptist preacher preaching. But that was the churches. Now the government seems to be getting their hands in. What do they call it? Church and state. Well, the church is going against the Bible. Now the state is doing it. And maybe you'll get a nice little union of church and state again against the Bible believer. Right now, the government is for Jeremiah, but the people and the religious people are not. Who, who do you think we anger more when we're on the streets preaching? You think the cops really enjoy having to come and have a talk with us? Do you think the, the, the police dispatcher really enjoys taking phone calls about there's a guy yelling on us in the street about the Bible? I don't think they appreciate it. There have been cops who say, oh, hey, you leave them alone. They're doing good. The other people are causing trouble. But the people don't want to hear it, and the religions don't want to hear it. That's where we stand right now.